Hi there, thanks for joining us. Um, we've worked our way up to doing one of these for a while, but haven't actually done it. This is the first uh, Battle Axe Guitars a Cutting Edge video. I'm going to try and put one of these out once a week, uh, just to give a bit of coverage of what we're doing, what sort of things we're working on here at Battle Axe, and how things are going. Sorry if the camera's a bit shaky, it's just me here, and I've got one of those selfie stick things. Uh, but yeah, so what have we been doing this week? It's it's currently coming on midnight on Saturday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Friday night. Uh, it's coming on midnight, and I've been here all day. And uh, what have we done today? So I'll take you through some of the wee jobs that we've done today. Uh, so first of all, there's a lot of work we've done on Neil Market Mac Neil Macintosh's guitar. That's uh, the uh, custom resonator. Uh, it's got its carbon fiber back on, and it's got its one of its carbon fiber sides. And we are going to be putting the other carbon fiber side on tomorrow. Once that's done, uh, it's just a case of rubbing it down, denibbing it, getting another coat of epoxy on there uh, to smooth it. Uh, again, rub it down again. Um, we're then looking at the clear coats uh, for the top. Uh, before that, of course, there's got to be the, the black burst blend uh, to bring everything together. The uh, the neck for Neil's guitar uh, is coming together nicely. Uh, Neil's guitar, uh, he needed specifically a chunky neck. Uh, he's got uh, big Glaswegian fingers, so he needed uh, a chunky neck. So what we did was we went with a classical guitar neck. Uh, we we cut the neck to the size and shape of a classical guitar neck to give him that extra width to the fingerboard because of course as you know classical guitar fingerboard is quite a bit wider um, so for somebody with larger fingers it's actually a good thing uh, but of course he wanted uh, a resonator parlor size resonator so really nylon strings weren't going to work so We've got the uh, classical neck reinforced with two carbon fiber truss rods, and we've got a lovely uh, Spalt and Sycamore fretboard on there with a Celtic inlay. Nice set of uh, what do you call those tuners? The ones Fender used. Uh, Clusons. Nice set of Clusons to go in there. And uh, yeah, Neil's guitar is almost ready to have its final finish done and get sent out to him. Um, a few other things have happened this week. Uh, we've got some new tools in. I'll come to that in a minute, though. Uh, we also have the uh, two Boral Ailies, which are approaching completion. Uh, one a nice shamrock pattern one, and one just like a Celtic knot, uh, and a sort of a red, blue, bit of yellow in there. Is there a bit of orange, a bit of gold? Yeah, a bit of everything in there. So it's uh it's non-political colors okay guys it's non-political colors there's all there's all colors in there and uh on top of that hang on they just adjust this camera here for minutes there we go yeah on top of that uh we have started this week a project uh for a charity instrument so what I'd like to do is, because I'm a veteran, I'm ex-Air Force, um, and I've uh, I've had to call the Legion, British Royal British Legion, a couple of times during my time after leaving the Air Force uh, for assistance. And they've always been there for me when I needed them. The Royal British Legion is an absolutely superb charity. And with Remembrance Day coming up, Poppy Day coming up, I wanted to do something for them. So I'm going to be making a ukulele, just a, a small soprano ukulele uh, in the shape of a poppy and I'm going to auction it um, and uh, any money that it raises I'm going to give to the Royal British Legion now it might only raise a fiver it might raise a tenner it might raise a hundred who knows what it'll raise but no matter what it gets it's you know it's it's money in the coffers of a charity um, so it's you know it's a good thing so on top of that there's also a couple of bases which I'm working on. Um, I'm not going to say who they're for. There's some people who know who they're for. Um, I suppose in particular the people who they're for know who they're for, if that makes sense. Uh, but uh, 
No, I'm not going to say who they're for, but it's for two um, very well-known bass players. And those are in progress at the minute. So hopefully they'll be done soon as well, and we can get a wee bit of a press release with those. Uh, but at the minute, the two instruments is near as completion, the three instruments is near as completion, is Neil's guitar and the two Borley Elise. There is also a Battle Axe Blade Resonator in progress, uh, but uh, I'm not going to show you anything of that at the minute, because it's, it's looking a bit messy, a bit scrappy. Um, I'd rather let you see it when it's closer to completion. So let's have a look at the new tools then. Yeah, let's look at the new tools. Yeah. I'm pleased with the new tools. What we've got, we've got uh, we've got a bandsaw here. So we have a superb bandsaw by a company called Ozigo. It's not an expensive bandsaw, but it's a pretty good little bandsaw. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how I cope without one. The things that this can do is unreal. Is you can do rips on it. You can do shapes, you can do, it's just outstanding. It's an outstanding saw. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm sculpting with it, I'm shaping with it. I'm doing long rips, I'm doing re-sawing. Re uh, it's fantastic, it's, it's just outstanding. Uh, the other new tool that we got this week was this little baby here. And uh, this is our bench top belt saw and circular is this belt saw. <laughs> Sorry, our <laughs> our bench top band belt sander and disc sander, and that is absolutely outstanding as well. I've been shaping necks on this, and it's given me beautiful neck profiles. Again, it's another tool I don't know how I cope without. Um, funny how these tools you don't realize you need them until you've actually got them and of course there's our dust extraction which we have pimped up this week uh, can you see it there dust extraction there we go so just to give you a quick rundown on the dust extraction that white that blue barrel there is where the dust is collected the white coat at the top of it is a cyclone uh, one pipe goes off to the tools to suck up the dust, the other tool, the other pipe goes off to the vacuum cleaner. Really simple. All that happens is it sucks the air in with the dust. The air goes up through the top into the vacuum cleaner. The dust spins around and around and around with centrifugal force and just falls down into the, bar the blue barrel. And you never need to change filters on the Hoover because none of the dust goes in there. It all goes straight into that barrel. It's outstanding. Again, fantastic. I wouldn't have had this. In the old workshop, because the old workshop has the same size on the outside toilet. Um, so what we've got here, we've got our templates. So you've got your uh, battle axe blades and boron resonators. You've got your battle axe, battle axe model. I've got just a couple of other blanks there. So yeah, there's our templates. Um, what else have we got? Let's have a little look at how the studio, how the workshop itself is coming along. So, excuse the dust in here, because it is a bit dusty. And this is the workshop at the moment. As it stands. So, we come in, coming in the door, we have the power tools, we have the dusty tools. Uh, I thought keep them as far away from the paint areas and the resin areas as possible. All the dust tools with the dust extraction. Oh, a couple of ukulele bodies there. One of those is going to be the uh, charity one. Uh, we come on round and we come into our carpentry area. Uh, so there you've got basically tooling for general carpentry work. And on the bench there, you'll notice the neck for Neil McIntosh's resonator and two bore lilies. A nice rosewood fretboard and a nice maple fretboard. And they're coming along nicely. They should be ready by, I should say, about this time next week. They'll be ready to go and get listed for sale. So if anybody wants a, a Borlele, there's two in the pipeline. 
So guys, thanks for joining us. That's what's been happening on Battle Axe this week. Uh, I know this is the first video that we've put out, the first proper video we've put out. Uh, quality might not be the greatest. Quality might not be up to the likes of Crimson's or Texas Toast's uh, video standard. Uh, but this is only the first video. Uh, we're still finding ourselves here uh, in terms of doing videos. So uh, be very much appreciated if you would like, follow and subscribe. Click the bell icon. That's what everyone says, isn't it? Click the Everyone points down there and okay, click that thing, click that. So please do, please like and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. Uh, and if you have any suggestions for things that you want to see Battle Axe doing in videos, instruments you want us to make, instruments you'd like to see us make in, uh, the sort of things you'd like us to cover in the videos, we like to cover they like us to cover builds, would you like to just see a weekly update of what's happening in Battle Axe, that sort of thing, let us know. Uh, comment below, send us an email. Sam at battleaxeguitars.com, btlxguitars.com. Uh, send us an email, drop us a line, get in touch, have a look at the website, shout us out on Twitter or Facebook. We're all over the place. Uh, um, we love hearing from you. Just give us a shout. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be great. We'll have a bit of crack. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, guys. I am going to go home now and watch a wee bit of TV and then go to bed. So thanks for joining us, thanks for coming in today. Um, hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and peace out everyone. Love you all. Bye.